Hello, I am soprano Svetlana Kasian. Finally, with us today, one of the best pianist, coach, vocal coach, and great musician, Alessandro Amoretti. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Five steps to learn a role or an aria a new role or a new aria. I would say, first of all, read, read, read. Read about the character, read about the uh, literature background that is around the aria or the role that you are learning. For example, if you um, uh, study Bohème, read Murger, um, and so on. If you study Don Carlos, uh, read Schiller try to have a bigger picture of what is around um, uh, the role that you are singing. Second, study very slowly and very big secret in tempo. When you study your role, try to sing, even if you study note by note, try to have a pulse. Sometimes you might need even a metronome. Why? Because the voice, if you try a, a particular a phrase in a tempo or in a, a rhythmical structure that is different from the a structure that you will have in the real life, it will use different um, a muscles and different um, a, a systems inside your body. So try to sing in tempo, even when you, when you learn at first very slowly. Third, buy or find a very good edition. There are several different editions for any area that you might approach, any, any, any role that you might approach. And nowadays it's a very, very important to um, apply to the uh, original version of the, of the piece, that, of the opera that you are, or piece that you are, that you are going to sing. Fourth, fourth, take time. One aria, a new aria needs a month of study, a new aria, just to have the idea how it works. And then maybe, maybe two or three months to really feel it inside your, your voice, inside your body. A new role needs uh, for me, it needs one year of preparation. Don't be stressed. Fifth, fifth, internet. Internet has changed completely the way we are learning things, not only in music, but even for musicians. If in the past it was a very difficult to get uh, examples of how people, for example, sing the aria that, that you are, you are uh, trying to learn. Nowadays, you have access to all the material you can have. Listen to all of it. It's very bad for me if you find an example, for example, a, a, a preferred singer, and you want to repeat what that particular singer is doing. This kind of imitation will not allow you to find your way. So better nothing, but the, nowadays, actually, the best way to have an idea of the in interpretation of a piece is to get access to all the material possible. It, we have so much, it's much easier than in, in the past to have a, a comprehension, to have um, information about the things that we are learning. So nowadays we have the duty to know, to know all of it. So listen to all your colleagues of the past and the present and uh, compare the different things and try to understand this applies more to me, this applies less to me, this is more interesting and less interesting, but listen a lot. So this um, question for me is related to the uh, topic stage fright. Especially at the beginning of, the, of a career, um, there is this uh, phenomenon that is actually 
it shouldn't scare anybody. It's, it's normal. All of us, even experienced musicians and singers, have this uh, particular emotion, sometimes uh, difficult to control when a, an important event like an audition or an important competition comes. Uh, I have a little tip that is quite interesting for the singers I work with. When, you, when it's uh, one minute before then going out, that uh, maybe you are listening that the person on stage is telling your name and it's about to go and you feel that the um, emotions are getting uh, uh, out of control stop a, a second breathe deep and think about what you have you been eating the night before this thing will uh, uh, switch off your brain from this uh, um, um, uh, black hole where you come when you are when the nerves are too too strong to be controlled and uh, you will uh, get into like into another universe where you are more relaxed and eating and, and being uh, not very preoccupied about what's happening breathe in see this picture of you eating the thing, really picturing in front of you what have I have been eating the night before. And then come again in the real world and go and go to stage. This will help you very much. Yes, it's very, very important to build um, a, a list of areas for an audition or the competition. A auditions and competitions differ a bit because in a competition you should prepare things that are absolutely suitable for your type of voice completely so at the, at the, at the competition you sing what you are able to sing at the moment in your age with your type of voice and uh, your skills so listen very carefully to your mentors what they say about what your voice uh, uh, is able to do and not able to do. Uh, if you are not completely sure about your mentors, listen to different people and compare and try to understand really what your voice is able to do at the moment. For auditions, it depends, especially auditions for agents, but even in a certain uh, extent auditions for theatres, you should dedicate a part of this list to something that is more in perspective. So, for example, you have a group of five areas. You, pre you present three areas that are what you could sell tomorrow, what you could sing uh, tomorrow on stage. But maybe one, at least one, or maybe even two, are the possible development in one year, in two years. Not really what you are able, um, uh, not what your voice is formed to do at the, at the very moment but in the future might be able to do. I suggest that the singers I work with, when, when we prepare together a, a list of, of areas, to start with a bigger group, bigger number of areas. For example, sometimes we arrive to nine or ten different areas. We start with this, this bunch of areas and we try to play with this, with this areas and to see how the voice reacts. This is the first the first uh, stage, and then we take out of this uh, nine or ten, two or three, and we remain with on around the seven, and then we start to work in detail with these seven that seem to be more suitable for the for the um, voice and the um, soul of the, of the singer, and then when we arrive closer to the audition, for example, one month before, maybe the seven became, become six. And so that there is always a possibility one day before the audition to try out the six areas and to say, you know, the voice is a live thing, you never know. You come, an area that always worked wonderfully, the day before the audition doesn't work. And you say, okay, tomorrow I'm not going to sing this, but I have still five very prepared areas. Mm -hmm. Of course, for, audition, for competitions you cannot do this because the program is fixed, but for audition you can play a bit more, just excluding the one that you feel you are not feeling comfortable at the very moment 
when you arrive and you remain with the good five, the golden five that you bring to your audition. Languages. Um, study Italian, 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 Italian and Italian. There is no opera singer without knowing Italian. The major opera houses all around the world use Italian as common language. It's, English is very spread out because it's the international language we all speak, but Italian is the language of opera and it's still really physically the language, the rehearsals are, 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 are led, uh, even if you work in uh, Russia or, uh, or uh, um, uh, China or uh, South America or uh, uh, say United States. It's, uh, you go to the Metropolitan Opera and people speak Italian. So Italian is absolutely compulsory. If you don't know Italian, st uh, start to study tomorrow. Then I would divide voices into two categories. Um, there are voices that are more inclined to the German repertoire and voices that are more inclined to the French repertoire. Very superficially said, uh, more or less uh, heavier voices are more uh, and have a bigger tendency to, to develop the German repertoire and the opposite for lighter voices. So, dependently with your uh, type of voice, um, uh, priori priori um, give the priority to the, um, one of these two languages, um, uh, German or French. Then, if you are uh, uh, interested enough and uh, skilled, you could try to learn both, but I would say at first, because another thing, learn, I, I, this is my personal experience, but I know that it's highly recommended to learn one language at the time. Don't try to learn two, three at the, at the same time. So if at the moment you speak on only your native language, at first le learn ba basic English, because with basic English you go to an audition and at least you say good morning and you say what you are uh, able to sing. Then I repeat Italian, 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 absolutely compulsory that take your time to learn, you know, 80% of the uh, opera masterpieces are Italian, by the way, you know, so, so absolutely necessary. So, and um, a, a French and German and German, choose one of the two and then maybe both of them if you, if you can. Um, uh, there are uh, particular kinds of voices that might want to develop English even as a singing, singing um, a language because uh, especially in the 20th century there is a development of uh, a British and American opera that is quite interesting as an alternative repertoire and nowadays is uh, flourishing so it's uh, quite interesting to learn. And this leads to me to the, another, the other aspect, aspect of learning languages, the pronunciation. For um, a singer's pronunciation is uh, a very, very uh, detailed and careful uh, part of the uh, personal development and study. Uh, learning a pronunciation doesn't mean only to learn the rules of how a vowel or a consonant are spoken, but really to taste the language in, in its uh, poetic uh, characters. So to feel the word inside your mouth with its meaning. And uh, I think the only way to really to do it is to try to spend time in the country the, of the language you are learning. For example, in the case of Italian, go to Italy. That is uh, the most beautiful country in the world. <laughs> spend uh, a bit of time there and try to speak to the natives and learn how to communicate with that language. It will be very pr uh, uh, helpful for your a study of roads. Um, a couple of pieces of advice about career that I wish all of you to start and to have uh, the highest level possible. 
Um, first of all, voice is an alive thing. It's a very delicate instrument inside your body and it's a very precious thing. So a very, very, very important thing is to understand what your voice is able to sing at the moment. There are two typical mistakes that can be done. Either you sing too heavy rolls or you sing too light rolls. It can happen that uh, your mentor, your teacher, gives you things that at the moment are too heavy for you and you struggle to arrive to that uh, power that you don't have because simply maybe you are too young and maybe in a couple of years you will be able but uh, it's a misunderstanding leads you to sing, to sing that particular role. But there are uh, bigger voices that sometimes have the uh, opposite problem that uh, they are surrounded by mentors that don't really understand the characteristic of a voice a dramatic voice, for example, that um, it will be at its peak much later than other voices and at the moment, of, for example, when you start to um, uh, try to, to uh, study roles at the age of 18 or 20, for example, is not developed yet, your mentors might not be able to hear what is the voice inside the voice and they give you things that are maybe a bit too light for the development of your voice and you start to sing out of your support, out of your voice. And or they give you roles that are right but they I, um, force you to sing too soft, too unsupported because they hear sounds that for their ears sound maybe a bit too aggressive but actually they are because your voice is um, um, a destined to be a, a dramatic voice or a, at least a spinto voice. So this is quite interesting to have really the spectrum of the things that at the moment are suitable for you. This will allow you together with a very solid technique that is absolutely important and allow you to sing for many years because uh, you might uh, uh, use your instrument quite quite fast in a couple of years and to find yourself then unfortunately in a big troubles uh, in, in right in the middle of your career uh, that i wish to nobody and um, the other thing is that in, in, there is a magic moment when a student stops to become a student and start to have the real career that magic moment when the um, agents start to contact you when the first uh, uh, occasions on stage come and uh, sometimes there are situations where all in a sudden from nothing comes a lot of uh, work together and a very big problem, very big difficulty is to learn sometimes to say no to uh, offers. Why? Because calm and relaxation in the preparation of a role, as we said uh, before, is a very, very, very important thing. It's maybe the most important thing that you have the time to build up a role. So try to build around yourself as much as possible a situation that is a similar to an ideal world where you have a lot of time at your, at your disposal. Fight to have time to study because you use really two little things that are your vocal cords that are extremely small and extremely delicate. If you look them in a picture they are really very very thin, very delicate and very very small. Learning a role in a very fast time will um, uh, put your vocal cords into too much stress. So that's why time is very important. Even rest is very important. To have uh, nice vacations, to stop sometimes to have all your
preoccupations about preparing a role and to give a week to yourself to have fun and especially relaxation, to go to nature, to go to have very nice walks in the woods, to go to uh, swim in a, a marvelous sea. So have time to yourself, develop your soul and body as well as your voice, not only your voice and musical skills, but you as a person might, must be in um, a balance with yourself in order to have a good career.